yesterday i endeavored to clear some of the major misconceptions that are likely to harass the mind of a yoga student or a practitioner of yoga it was also necessary to clear up the very enigmatic relation that one maintains with human society outside i emphasize the fact that since we have been living like social units right from our birth we are accustomed to think only in social terms we forget that god is not a social being he is not one among the many but the human being is one among the many others like one's own self the existence of a human individual in society is tremendously influenced by the nature of the society around so much so that one cannot easily as a physical and psychological individual range oneself from social relations society has become a part of our very skin and to feel so social contact would be like peeling our own skin yet some such super normal adventure has to be embarked upon when we take to the practice of pure spirituality or yoga the desires of the human mind which are socially oriented individualistically conditioned as they have become part and parcel of our very way of thinking persist in telling us with a different voice that how would you attain salvation when society is clinging to you this question was clear in our earlier discourses and it is necessary for every one of you to bear this in your mind if you are really going to be a 100% student of yoga and not merely a half hearted appreciator or participant in the work of spirituality here in this ashram during these functions within this sadhana week the intention is to pervade to you all a spiritual background that exists behind your personal and social way of thinking and interpretation of things the atman or the soul that you are is not a part of human society there is no society of souls you will be wondering is it so but what is society then society is a well arranged pattern of socio physical individualities 
the soul is not confined to your body. It is a consciousness which you call the Atman or the soul. It is a pervading essence of which we appear to be a little part on account of our association with this body. Just as if the space contained in a little tumbler has the awareness of itself as being within the tumbler, it will think that the space which is largely expanding outside is external to it. Because of the walls encircling this little space inside the tumbler. But if the walls are removed, there is no tumbler space. It is one space all pervading omnipresent. Therefore, the idea that the Atman attains salvation may not be associated with the another wrong notion that the individual person attains salvation. The world is also a soul by itself. As there is an apparently conceived individual soul, there is a world soul which animates all existence in any form. The world soul may be compared to the wide space pervading everywhere. And the apparent individuality of our own soul inside may be regarded as something like a space contained in a little encircled wall. Who attains salvation finally? Neither you nor anybody else taken in their individualistic sense. Because the Atman attains salvation. It is not the body or the mind that goes to God in its state of liberation. When you say that the Atman reaches absolute and reaches salvation, you immediately bring before your mind the notion of what this Atman is. Too much explanation on this subject is not necessary as you are practically aware of the essence of what was spoken to you before. If the Atman is a pervading essence, as the so-called space inside a vessel is really the all-pervading space, the attainment of salvation by the Atman would mean the attainment of salvation by the omnipresent consciousness itself, which is called the Atman in terms of our bodily existence. Salvation is a universal attainment. Universal in the sense that you cannot separate yourself from the environment in which you are located when you are rising up to the state of salvation or attainment of God. As I mentioned to you, the environment of human society is part and parcel of your existence here in society. In a similar manner, the entire nature is a larger society than human society, which is a inseparable accompaniment to your personal existence. Society and nature cling to you not as external objects or things, but as your own wider involvement in the life of the universe. The attainment of salvation, therefore, 
is an indescribable, unthinkable achievement. Humanly conceivable methods of operation cannot comprehend this truth. For the time being, when you are an ardent student of yoga, persisting in the salvation of yourself, for the time being at least you have to stand up as a superhuman person. The yogi is not a person. He is a super individual comprehensiveness. The meaning of it has to be clear to every one of you. When you rise to the Almighty, the entire creation rises with you. I have been mentioning another analogy on other occasions to you, if you can remember it well. That when you wake up from dream, all the people in dream also wake up with you. And they are not remaining, they are outside you. Not that you, separately from those people in seen in dream, have woken up. Unthinkable this phenomenon also is. Society bound mentality cannot understand this philosophical or spiritual connotation of our spiritual experience. As all the world of dream experience rises simultaneously into a wider comprehension of waking consciousness, in a similar manner, the world consciousness will rise up with you. If this does not take place, salvation has no meaning. These precedents of consideration when you sit for meditation has to be taken care of very, very carefully. Yesterday again I dilated upon the methods of meditation and some system of contemplation on the deity as you conceive it was explained. That was particularly an aspect of devotion or bhakti marga. That was what I mentioned to you yesterday. But there are other ways which certain yoga students may follow. They are the pure volitional methods of affirmation of will. It is not a devotion to any particular deity, but it is a devotion to a particular principle. This psychological method of contemplation he is actually the attempt on the part of the yoga student to grasp the principle of operation in the universe. What are the principles? You have heard in cosmological doctrines that the creation of the world as we conceive it, commence with a dark covering of potentiality for creation called in Sanskrit Mula Prakriti, original matrix of the creative process. The methodology of the descent in the process of creation is very important to remember in this path of yoga. The universal being appears to be clouded as it were with this darkness of 
potentiality for creation. As it happens when we are fast asleep, the darkness of the causes of our sleep covers the potential Atman within us so that even if we have the brilliance of the consciousness of the Atman within us impenetrably, the darkness of the potential for sleep covers it so that when we are fast asleep, we do not know what is actually happening to us. It is only when we wake up we realize that there was some obstacle due to which you are not aware even of your own existence. The process of creation is similar to the process of waking up from sleep. What happens when we are awake? Our consciousness of existence manifests itself and tells us that we are and there is a world of objects outside. Here in this waking perception, the Atman does not directly operate. If it directly operates, you will not see the world outside. You will see a flood of light, but that does not happen in our waking condition. Due to the fact that even when we are awake, the consciousness of the Atman penetrates through the darkness that covered us in sleep. And therefore our waking understanding is a condition rather a little bit distorted way of perception. This is the reason why all our intellectuality, rationality and study and learning through the intellect, we cannot understand the world correctly. We see it topsy-turvy and thoroughly mistaking it for something different from what it really is. So, intellectual knowledge, rationality, philosophical or any kind of achievement is not of any utility in the spiritual contemplation of the soul. All the great values of life that we enshrine in our bosom as very dear to us are of no worth finally, as you will know, at the time of passing from this world. Great man and poor man die in the same way. Rich man and poor man, known man, unknown man, death is a leveler of everyone. So your learning has not helped you in any way to distinguish you from a beggar or an illiterate man when you are actually dying. Such learning is poor stuff which has no essence in it. This happens because, because our present waking consciousness through which we learn all things is conditioned by the darkness of ignorance through which as the sun rays penetrate through thick clouds not clearly as the sun himself is. The inward consciousness manifests itself in waking through the cloud of our ignorance, disturbed, scattered in many directions as sunlight, thus when it is trying to penetrate through, through scattered clouds. Therefore, the soul has to be distinguished from mental awareness. The awareness of the soul is quite different from the awareness of the mind and the intellect. For the reason I mentioned to you already. When the soul rises to action, 
you will find that a kind of bursting of your personality will be experienced by you i cannot choose any other expression for this phenomenon in our daily life the soul never manifests itself therefore utterly we are grieved throughout the day and entirely in our life if the soul had an occasion to manifest itself at least once in our life we would not know what sorrow is but it never manifests itself at all it is always submerged within the dark cloud of our ignorance created by unfulfilled desires of past lives which we have brought with us when we have taken birth in this life with tremendous attempt of understanding and will we have to try to delve into what you really are very rarely you become totally yourself it is said that sometimes under certain circumstances <clears throat> the entire soul takes possession of us when we feel that we are under the possession of the whole world the whole world has entered into us when we have become emperor of the whole world can you imagine the state of an emperor of the whole world such a person never existed in history and such a person is not likely to exist also but at least in imagination you can feel what would that person experience when he is the master of the whole world the total person will rise up to a comprehension of the total world indescribable joy temporarily manifested though through the sattvic quality of the mind will reveal in a symbolic manner at least what one would experience when the soul rises to act there are other occasions it is said when the soul will totally take possession of you when you are drowning in the water and you have no other alternative the entire life process will get congealed into your experience and what anyone would feel at that time of drowning only the drowning man will know others cannot know it at another time also the soul seems to be taking possession of us when we are enjoying dreamless sleep not disturbed sleep garden nidra as they call it stone like sleep log like sleep <clears throat> when you wake up you feel tremendously refreshed even a sick person feels better after his sleep wounds heal in a remarkable manner after a good sleep of a patient you do not like to wake up after the experience because that joy of the fulfillment of your soul which pervaded the entire personality of your soul sleep does not allow you to rise up from it as early as possible so you like to sleep more and more but when the sleep is over you have only a memory of that wonderful blissful relaxing sleeping condition and then you begin to think as i mentioned you begin to think only through this darkness of the potentiality of sleep 
in the creative process some such thing takes place the universal consciousness of brahman the almighty penetrates through this potential of prakriti which is the creative seed and the penetrating consciousness though it is the absolute when it penetrates through the darkness of the creative potential it gets colored by the conditioning process of the will of prakriti this condition is called the creator of the universe as we call the brahma the progenitor of the cosmos the absolute being god as he is in himself does not create anything he is all in all and he is alone and there is nothing outside him the question of something being outside gradually manifests itself when this universal being penetrates through this veil of mula prakriti that conditioned consciousness universally spoken of is called mahat the great universal intellect of brahma there is further down a manifestation as sleep becomes a dreaming condition and the dreaming condition becomes a waking condition this mahatatva or the brahma principle descends into a more clarified outline of the future created universe in dream we have a pure outline of the waking condition that outline of creative thinking is called hiranyagarbha another form of the descended brahma shakti is so when it comes down again into a waking state it is called virat and we are now in that condition only we are in the virat consciousness just now multiplicity everywhere projected awareness of things at all times but there is a great distinction nevertheless between virat consciousness and our personal consciousness of the world the virat knows all this manifestation as itself only as its own body but we cannot feel that the whole universe is our body for us unfortunate that we are the world is outside us apparently with no connection with us then there is a perceptual process taking place we cannot perceive the world as virat perceives it because the virat's comprehension of the universe is i am i as we feel in regard to our own body in the waking state i am i i cannot be somebody else but now because in the waking state we begin to think through the sense organs we project the consciousness in a external fashion to space and time we wrongly think that the world is outside us <coughs> and we have the necessity of perceptual faculties now in this type of meditation a reverse order takes place the first stage of this reversal process is to withdraw the perceptual faculties which externalize the world as if it is outside you 
and bring these faculties to concentrate themselves on the mind itself and then with great effort of will assert that you are an inseparable physical part of the virat consciousness you feel at that time that you have become a world individual then there are other stages higher and higher as a bodh virat there is hiranyagarbha a bodh hiranyagarbha he is ishvara who is a manifested form of the supreme being through mula prakriti then there is god as he is in himself this contemplation is prescribed by certain teachers of yoga like maharshi patanjali in his yoga sutras there are certain sanskrit descriptive names given to these processes of gradual ascent the very first step of true meditation takes you beyond the concept of your individual body and the mind tries to permeate through the bodies of everybody in the world it is as if all the world is meditating at the same time in a very un- understandable manner which will not be very clear to you patanjali yoga sutras all this condition savitarka samadhi you don't be try frightened by the word samadhi because it is just a simple name to describe an equilibrium of perception when you behold all things in a equalized fashion it is in a way called sahaja samadhi and not a transcendent anesthesia as some modern materialistic psychologists define it psychology cannot understand what this state actually is the mind has to be rooted in this awareness for a long time you must again be very cautious here not to mix up your world consciousness with this world consciousness that is samvitarka your world consciousness is one of externalized perception through the sense organs here in this world perception of the samvitarka state there is nobody to behold the world through the sense organs the world contemplates itself though it be in a physical form you can with the power of your imagination feel for a few seconds at least that all space time stars sun moon and all physical creation has entered into your body <coughs> and you will not be seeing this world outside because the whole world has entered you and it has become you for the time being thus even the lowest stage of yoga achievement is far removed above ordinary sensory perception of the world these things have to be understood only at the feet of a great guru or master studies of yoga literature will not clarify your mind 
because these are things which you have never heard of and you will not easily hear of also when you are in your daily routines of birth in the world however whether or not you are going to rise up into the state in this birth i shall at least outline before you what will happen to you <coughs> in this practice of yoga as described by patanjali maharaj the world consciousness will melt down into a higher stage where it will not be in any way associated with the your tinge of sense perception when we think of this world awareness in the condition of yoga we may be under the impression somehow or other the world is visible to us this therefore is to be overcome in another higher state called nirvitarka these are only words for you you can just hear them and forget them afterwards which means essentially the non contaminated visualization of the whole world as inseparable from you you are not merely a world individual you are the world itself you will be shuddering from the root of your being even to think such things your hair will stand on end your body will tremble the prana will stop breathing process and your heart will throb for a second because of this shock for the time being that you may receive a response of this kind of meditation higher than that i am repeating to you that i am only giving a detail for your purpose of hearing whether or not it has any practical value for you in the present state of your life the higher stage is savichara a technical word that suggests the experience of the world as a ocean of forces rather than of objects or physical things the world is not made up of solid objects finally it is a congealed form of cosmic energy far subtler than even electrical energy you may call it prana shakti which is more than the breathing process all the universe is a vibration of force which gets condensed into certain formations when the physical consciousness arises can you conceive the whole universe including yourself as a ocean of energy only and not a heap of individuals but beyond this there is something there is an awareness of the fact that the whole universe is nothing but a sea of energy this condition is that of the cosmic mind we may call it brahma's mind all pervading universal mind contemplating itself as the background of even the energy of the cosmos nirvichara is the next stage wherein 
the contemplation process ceases and becomes bare experience it is not so easy to apprehend what bare experience is minus thinking process then comes the most magnificent state of sananda or universal happiness all the joys of the world melt down into this one mass of happiness whatever joys you can conceive in this world any type whatsoever will all get centralized here in the center which is everywhere the circumference nowhere as they call it this condition is called sananda there is a higher state still which is called sasmita it will not be even an experience of universal bliss but just an awareness that it is we are almost touching the borderland of god consciousness just it is i am not enjoying the happiness of the universal experience there is no enjoying there i am myself the joy if you yourself are made up of joy what would you feel at that time there would be no experience of joy joy experiences itself that is sananda sasmita they say there is something more than that let them say anything we are not very much concerned with that it is entering into the bosom of god for i will you this aloneness of god being unimaginable for the human mind god only knows who god is god contemplates himself god knows himself god he is what he is this is liberation of the soul it is salvation it is moksha or mukti it is not merely somebody going to god in the sense of a attainment it is god himself absorbing the whole thing into himself as he was before the creation of process the creation ceases to be and it melts down into god be this experience is moksha experience some such picture of our advance in the path of yoga is described in the yoga sutra of patanjali maharshi the system sometimes called raja yoga ashtanga yoga or by any other name stop thinking for a second and feel what you feel even you are hearing these things if they have really entered your you should consider yourself as blessed the purpose of your coming to the ashram is fulfilled your sins are destroyed all the karmas are gone 
you are a polished shining individual now you return home as a super person not a bound soul being some business in a factory or a shop i have gone to shivananda ashram and not come back as i went i am something different which you cannot explain to yourself blessed you are if you have appreciated this and you have really entered your core of being god bless you very very much sir